Hello, this is Ted Fletcher with FMS Integration. I'm going to show an example of a Moxa M gate configured as a Modbus RTU Master. A typical use of a Moxa M gate is the Modbus RTU Slave configuration. The Ethernet to serial gateway is configured so that a master system pulls the Moxa over the network and converts the request to go out on a serial cable. In this video, we're going to use a Moxa M gate MB3170 as our example. Here are a few different examples of when a Modbus RTU master can be used. Island networks, legacy hardware, TCP connection limits, or cybersecurity concerns. With a Moxa bridge solution, the master device sends a request. The slave Moxa receives the request. The request is then converted to Modbus RTU and sent over the serial cable connecting the two Moxa devices. Only Modbus data is able to be requested and sent over the line. The master Moxa routes the slave ID being requested to the correct IP Ethernet device. Once received, the packet request is sent back to the original system requesting the data. So configuring a MOX is pretty straightforward depending on how many IPs or field devices you're trying to route to, to that device end, um, we'll just end up increasing the amount of rinse and repeat that you need to do through the process once you go to map to those slave IDs to IP address. So first thing we want to do, log into the unit, go to home. First, you want to optimize the serial setting. So you want to left click on that. And then we want to change it to the max speed, 9 to 1600. We can leave parity at none, data bit at eight, stop bit at one, flow control to none, first in, first out, enabled, and then change the interface from RS-232 to 45 four wire. Click on submit, click on restart, takes the Moxa a few seconds to reboot, whether it's one of the smaller single port units or even a 16 port unit. Once a few seconds passes, we'll go back to home, we'll log back in, click on home. Now we'll go down to the protocol settings, to where we're gonna to wanna to come down to mode. And here we're going to want to change this to RTU master and seeing we're just doing this one-to-one -one and we're going to be doing some mapping features we can just disable the ProCom feature click on submit click on restart same thing takes a few seconds for the unit to reboot click on home log back in Go to the home, go over to the left navigation, click on protocol settings. So then next we want to go down to is this Modbus routing. So you want to left click on that. And then here we can see nothing is configured. So starting off initially, what we want to do is we want to click on this add. And it's going to open up this second window. So type, we want to select Modbus TCP. And then we're going to type in the IP address of that field controller. So in this example, one. if you're using an alternative port for Modbus TCP outside of 502, you can update that here. So we have an start ID, end ID, and then there's an offset. So on this first one in this example, uh, we're going to be using slave ID 1. So then the end address on this one, because we're doing a one-to-one -one bridge, then we'll select end ID 1. And then on the offset, we're just going to leave this at 0. Click on Submit. So now we can see channel 1. It's doing Modbus TCP on that output, acting as a master. And we can see when a request comes in to this master unit 
for slave ID 1, it's going to be looking for slave ID 1 based on this IP address. So if all of the field controllers are using slave ID 1, you don't need to go through and reprogram them. This is one of the slick features that Moxa has incorporated. So now we can add a new one. Same thing, Modbus TCP. We come in, we enter in the address for our next one, which would be 102. So on this one, we're going to say that the start ID is 2, end ID is 2, but we're going to offset it so when it actually goes to route and connect, we're requesting slave ID 2 from the master unit, but then when it goes out to talk to the actual field unit, it's going to be looking for ID 1. So that's where when we want to offset it by 1, we just set that by 1. Click on submit. So now you can see based on the routing, so channel 2, same thing, acting as a master. So when ID 2 is being requested by this unit, it knows to look for the real ID of ID 1, and it will route to that IP address ending in 102. So then we can keep going through this process. I'm going to update it real quick just so we can finish off the configuration. So here I updated the other four units. So now we have all six units that we're using in this example configured to where you can see when pulled that using that 10 dot address and it bridges across requesting for slave ID 1. It knows the route across to go to the 101 address 2 routes across to 102 3, 103, so on and so forth. So once we have those updated, we just click on submit and click on the restart. Then on the unit that's going to be sitting on the common network side, we just want to make sure that we have the port set up for RTU slave and then have those serial column settings updated. So we'll come inside here, log into the unit, go to home, so this is where when you come down to serial settings, I already went through and updated it, but you want to set it to that max baud rate and then make sure all the settings match the Modbus RTU master unit. And then under protocol settings, make sure that mode is set up to RTU slave. Once everything's been programmed and cabled up, then it's a matter of updating your master systems for using that new mapping. And then if not using one of the master systems, use a third party tool such as Modbus Poll for Modbus Tools to go through and scan the devices just to ensure there are no comm issues. If you like what you see, hit like. If you want to stay up to date, hit subscribe. And by all means, feel free to leave a comment. We understand that not all applications are the same, so if you have any sort of questions, comments based on this video, or any application questions in general, feel free to reach out and contact us at fmssi.com.